Right, Victoria will become the first state in Australia to tax people who operate an Airbnb. It's part of a suite of housing reforms unveiled by the Andrews government today. The tax comes in the form of a 7.5% levy on short-stay accommodation with the aim of getting landlords to take their properties out of the Airbnb market and put them back in the long-term rental market. Here's the Premier Daniel Andrews earlier today. I don't expect this to be universally popular. Some people will say it's too high, some people will say it's not high enough. Some people want Airbnb and these sorts of platforms banned or some limit of 90, 90 nights a year and stuff like that. Ultimately, there's a place for short stay. Uh, it, it's, it's very important. Uh, a lot of people use it and like it. The issue is you can go down the path that other cities around the world, other jurisdictions have done, where you try and get rid of this as a platform and try and return all of that housing to the, the long-term rental market. Uh, but you have to police that. You have to enforce that. For more on this, let's bring in Dr Chris Martin, a senior fellow at the UNSW City Futures Research Centre, who looks into rental markets and housing affordability, so diving right into this sort of thing. So first of all, just short-term rentals, if it's being identified as a problem by the Victorian government, how much of a problem do you believe it is in terms of exacerbating the rental market, either Victoria or, or the rest of the country as well? It has been a rising issue for some years now, and it's it's a it's a big issue in some markets and not in others. And that's kind of an obvious thing to say, but there, there are some places throughout Australia where um, you find a, a, a very large part of uh, the housing stock has been used or and is being used quite intensively for short stay accommodation and has been for quite some time um but in other places it, it isn't the big news and and those places have other pressures on their markets um generally speaking across australia we've been very permissive uh, of short stay accommodation using our housing stock for tourism purposes so uh this move by the victorian government is a, a step towards um, uh, trying to uh, make some of those operations that there might be a bit marginal in terms of whether it makes more money in rental or makes more money in short stay, pushing the uh, the needle back towards uh, 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 long-term rental accommodation. Okay. And so that 7.5%, decent whack, not that much lower than GST. And remember, you've got to already have things like what the short-term letting company will charge you, cleaning fee and that decision to either pay it yourself if you've got a property or make the person pay it. How will this go in terms of shifting the needle in your view? Well, it'll make, um, it'll make some short-term renting a bit more expensive and so that'll make it a bit less attractive to consumers, to tourists, and that should knock out at, at the margin some short-term uh, operations, some short-term stay operations. And, and so that that should mean that, uh, relatively speaking, when, when a property owner is balancing up whether it's going to be better in short-term use or in, in long-term use, uh, long-term rental, a few more of them will find that the equation uh, points towards letting it out long-term. There's other approaches that could have been taken by the government, um, uh, and that includes uh, uh, more um, more locally specific regimes that might have been implemented by local councils. Um, but what we're seeing is this uh, statewide approach and a statewide uh, levy of about, as you say, about 7.5%, I think it is. So something more targeted, you're indicating, might have made more sense. We, we, we always talk around sort of the, the Australian market or the Victorian market, but your point being there are some areas where perhaps people are not that keen on moving to, we don't have a rental crisis in that area, and people happy to provide Airbnbs and it might be good for local tourism and, and perhaps some particular regional areas. So, so are you of the view it would have been better to have a targeted approach rather than statewide? Oh, the, the sort of approach that I've been interested in and that I know other people have been proposing in Victoria has been uh, at a local level, uh, councils uh, could be uh, they, they they might auction the right to, uh, to to property owners for for them to operate um, uh, short term letting operations and they might have a if you like a a short term letting budget that they'll, they'll offer so many permits um, uh, mm. depending on their assessed 
uh, their assessment of what, what the housing need in the community is and how much the community can bear uh, some of its housing resources being used for tourism resources instead. So that's sort of local, uh, locally responsive and uh, right. a, 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 a housing resource planning approach would be an alternative to, to the approach that the Victorian government has taken. I know looking at some of the work you've done, you have areas where up to 15% of the rental market can be short letting, which is, is pretty high, and I guess you get a problem. I mean, um, near where we are in Parliament House, Kingston, you can get Airbnbs pretty easily, uh, but you struggle to get a rental property and everyone wants to live there. It's close to where they work, which suggests there's a bit of a, a problem there. Is there any way to put a nationwide figure on how much this is an issue, though? Because... So what's the last vacancy rate? Our national vacancy rate at 1.2%. So I know you wouldn't abolish every single short-term let, but if you somehow did, how much of a percent would, would that go up by, the 1.2%? I, I couldn't say, but um, I, I think the, the sort of approach that I think we should be exploring, and this isn't to rule out what mm. Victoria has done as, as a first step, um, and it, it is useful in that it, it has it will make some short-term letting operations across Victoria um, uh, at the margin uh, less viable than uh, than a long-term uh, long-term residential let. So that, that that's a reasonable step to be taking in um, in making our housing stock a bit more available for use as housing as people's homes than as tourism accommodation, but. I think we should be also looking at uh, approaches that uh, require local authorities uh, to uh, assess the level of housing need in their community, uh, assess the affordability pressures that that um, that communities are under, and to make an assessment of just how much of the housing stock they can tolerate going to another another use like tourism uses. And what about on the flip side? So if if we had a significant reduction of short-term letting overall but in particular in some of those areas can hotels pick up the slack does it does it cost us tourism would it mean hotels sort of have people over a barrel and charge a lot more what are the possible consequences on the other side um well i guess i've i've always been a little bit skeptical about how far um, how much further the the, the short-term letting thing can go. Um, it, it has been, in some places, a significant uh, uh, a significant outflow, represent a significant outflow of properties to, uh, from the, the, the residential sector to the tourism sector. Uh, on the other hand, the idea that um, the, the most landlords will be... Um, uh, Prepared to really to to put in the to put in the work to put in the effort of running a a small boutique uh, hotel operation is or that's always struck me as being slightly unrealistic. So um, I think the 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 prospect that people uh, that some property uh, proponents often put around that uh, lots of owners are um, uh, ready to shift into uh, ready to shift into this sector, maybe a bit overblown. Um, uh, the the hotel sector has been undergoing a a a, a bit of a renaissance, okay. and you can see it happening in here with new businesses opening. Yeah. Um, it, I, I think that we, we should be careful about uh, the some of the claims made around Airbnb and short term letting, but on the other hand, coming up with as part of a, coming up with as part of local housing planning processes, local housing uh, needs assessment, uh, working out just how much a community can tolerate in terms of its housing stock being used for, for uh, tourism right. purposes. Long term, that's the better way of going. In other words, much more targeted. All right, interesting already to delve into, Dr Chris Martin. Thanks for your time.